Welcome to Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. Those of you uh, longtime viewers, you'll know that I had mentioned my dad was like, you just say Sarah Gonzalez Unfiltered. You say it like on a down note. You need to improve that. I think I have. I think I say it great every day, dad. I appreciate you watching. Um, so yesterday I spoke with uh, Dr. Eitan Heim, a general surgeon who blew the whistle on Texas Children's Hospital for their secret transgender program and for, of course, the difficult decision that he made to stand up and protect children he was rewarded with four felony indictments from the DOJ because, you know, we're living in Joe Biden's America and you can't speak out against the radical leftist agenda without severely paying for it. Now, his allegations about this transgender program for minors, th those were bad enough as it is. But it got even worse yesterday when we discussed this on the show. I encourage you to go back and watch it. A second whistleblower from the hospital, Vanessa Sivaj, came forward with allegations of Medicaid fraud committed by the hospital. See, it's illegal for doctors to bill Texas Medicaid for sex change procedures, and that prohibition, of course, extends to what some call gender-affirming care. But what this nurse alleges is that doctors simply change the, patient, the patient's gender on the billing records. So, for instance, a biological female who is listed as a Medicaid patient who is seeking testosterone to transition into a male was just listed as a male on the forms. Now, if that's true, that would mean the hospital not only was running a secret transgender program for kids, they were also stealing from taxpayers, which presumably, I would imagine, has very serious consequences. Well, I know a guy I thought I would ask about this, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton, who I am sure, thank you for being here, uh, General. I'm sure, as with anything, you can't say much about it, but can you confirm that there is an investigation that has been launched by your office into this? Yes, we have definitely launched the investigation. As you know, when we do investigations, we don't talk about what we're doing until we get to a result, either good or bad. Right. Well, um, I have full confidence in your office's ability to uh, to investigate this matter. And I'm sure you're familiar with uh, Dr. Heim's story, the original whistleblower, the way he's been politically persecuted by the FBI, the DOJ. But, you know, the second whistleblower said FBI, FBI agents also showed up at her front door. And from what she told Chris Rufo, they threatened her. They promised her they would make life difficult for her if she was trying to protect the leaker, that she wasn't safe at work and, you know, all of these threats and intimidation. And so it seems to me now that the FBI is in business of protecting hospitals, breaking Texas law. And I'm just saying, I don't know. I saw a bunch of people get up on uh, the stand during your impeachment sham and say incredulously that, oh, my goodness, Ken Paxton wanted to investigate the FBI. And, whoa, how could he possibly want to investigate these people? And I'm just saying it seems to me like these are people who need a whole hell of a lot of investigation. There's no doubt about it. In our investigation, pretty confident they were breaking laws, violating the U.S. Constitution. And yet we were stopped in the end from actually getting to the truth because of the guys in my office did everything they could to protect the FBI and the Department of Justice who have become abusive in how they deal with their job. Instead of going after crime, they are going after political opponents, just like this doctor. Mm -hmm. And whether you agree with them or not, as, as, as an FBI agent, your job is to, is to pursue justice. And that is a long gone, long gone from the Department of Justice and the FBI. Yeah, it's really, really um, sad to see. So so on this topic of just, you know, the radical leftist agenda of the Biden regime, um, I saw that you just recently filed suit against the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and HHS Secretary Javier Becerra for adopting a new rule that would force states to pay for gender transition procedures through Medicaid programs and then require providers to perform procedures even when doing so violates state law. So I I guess basically they want to make sure that what I just described to you, if what I just described is true, that the second whistleblower says, well, they were illegally, you know, they're defrauding uh, the insurance. They just want to make sure that that doesn't happen again. And these doctors don't have to go through the trouble of lying on their insurance forms about their patient's gender, I guess. And they think they have the right to circumvent Texas law. Do I have that right? I think you've got it right. Exactly. So the, go the Department of Health and Human Services and Javier Becerra, when he was Attorney General of, of California, they're used to our, our lawsuits. So we've had to we've had to go against California and the Health and Human Services many times, unfortunately. This is not our even our first Title IX lawsuit. We've won these in the past. And of course, it doesn't stop them from trying again. 
Yeah. So, okay. I'm glad that you brought up um, Title IX. So we've talked about that a lot on this program, obviously, uh, you know, fighting against, you know, males taking over female spaces and fighting against uh, this particular special interest group, uh, you know, fighting so hard to sexualize children, particularly in the state of Texas, is um, very important to me. And so one of those ways that Joe Biden, you just mentioned it, has tried to uh, enshrine all of this protections for males in female spaces was this new Title IX guidance. Obviously, you know, they tried to to change the language to include uh, how you identify, what gender you identify. And you just secured a major victory. Uh, you did what you do so well. You're like, nope, not in my state. That's not going to happen. You sued them. And the court even went so far as to say, I loved this quote. It said, uh, to allow the Biden administration, I call it regime, to allow the Biden administration's unlawful action to stand would be to functionally rewrite Title IX in a way that shockingly transforms American education and usurps a major question from Congress. That is not how our democratic system functions. Uh, it felt like an epic smackdown from this judge to the Biden regime. Well, first of all, that judge, I, I, I can see why you like that, that particular quote, because it summarizes in one sentence, I believe, what the problem here is. We have a federal government, a, an administration that is supposed to implement laws that were passed by Congress. Title IX was designed to protect women. Yep. It was designed to protect women's sports. It was designed to give them opportunity. And it certainly was not designed for men to come join women in sports and give them an advantage and allow them then to participate in going into women's locker rooms or bathrooms or showers, whatever. None of that was designed by Title IX. That, that in a nutshell, is the problem. We have a Congress that has passed this, elected representatives. Under our former government, that's supposed to be followed. And now the Biden administration, and this is what they've been doing since they've been in the office, they ignore what, what was written and they say, it doesn't apply, we can do whatever we want. And, and this is whatever, obviously what other governments do, Venezuela, China, Russia, this is how it operates. And they view themselves as so entitled and so elitist that they think they can just run roughshod over the, the elected representatives who have been put, put there by the people. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. So tell me if I read this correctly, this is, I mean, I guess anything can be appealed, but this was a permanent decision. This wasn't like a, anything temporary. That's correct. And, and look, it's deserved. We've already, we actually had this lawsuit years ago and we won it. And the Biden administration doesn't even, they don't care about precedent. They don't care about the law. They don't care about the country. As a matter of fact, they dismiss all of that. And their view is we can do whatever we want. Stop us. And so that's what we're, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah. So then what happens now in Texas schools? Like are Texas school districts allowed to make that particular decision to allow males in female spaces at all? No. As a matter of fact, we've sent out guidance saying now that we have got this injunction and and given Texas law prohibiting the very things that this this uh, Biden administration executive order or their guidance was trying to promote, schools cannot follow what, what the Biden administration was trying to push on us. They are not allowed to. So we've sent that off to all the schools just so they know the law and they can't hide behind, oh, well, we were confused. There was no confusion. We sent you exactly what the law is and we will do what we can to stop any school district that ignores Texas law and tries to follow what the Biden administration is forcing on us. Great. Well, I would encourage all of these school districts to uh, to... <laughs> Listen to your guidance. Don't mess with this man. OK, he's not uh, he's not afraid to sue. Um, so I just I appreciate you so much. Before you go, I have to ask you, just curious. I'm just saying, how can you tell me if you've maybe had any conversations with anyone who may or may not be running for president about the potential of, I don't know, maybe like U.S. Attorney General Ken Paxton? Well, I mean, I've been around him a few times where he's said it in front of me, in front of audiences or to people around me. So who knows? He's got we got a, the most important thing right now is to make sure we win. Yeah. And we're dealing with a lot of voter fraud. I'm convinced they're trying to uh, register these illegals to vote. That's why they're here. And so that's my main concern. I'll deal with the rest. If, if we're there and we're dealing with that decision, I'm in a pretty good we're all in a pretty good spot spot. Yeah, well, you know, it's funny because I, I have the conversation with people a lot about, I mean, obviously, you're hands down the best attorney general in the country. It's not even close. And so naturally, the conversation comes, uh, you know, comes up of, well, 
we could really use a super based attorney general of the country rather than Texas, but we don't want to lose him in Texas. But I'm like, yes, but Texas wouldn't need to be suing the crap out of the United States government if we had someone at the head of it who understood who had what powers, which would obviously be you. So I'm just saying I love you in Texas, but I'm just saying I'm a big fan. And of, look, uh, we can. We can get some, we, we've set a, a model here. We can get people to come join us at the AG's office who will do it in the future. Yeah. Forget about it. Yeah, good. Well, I appreciate you. I appreciate what you're doing. I'm sorry that you're in the position to just constantly sue the Biden administration. But you know what? Someone's got to do it. And uh, if someone's got to do it, I'm glad that it's you. So I, okay, I appreciate thanks. all that you're doing. And thank you for joining me. Hey, thanks for having me on. I always love it. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. All right. Thanks. Bye. All right. Gosh, he's just the best. I'm so fortunate. Uh, we are so fortunate here in the state of Texas to uh, to have such an amazing attorney general. I'm just, and again, I stand by my statements, General. Okay, we could like we could find someone in Texas. All right, it would be a great loss. Don't get me wrong, but we could find someone in Texas. We need you at the very top, cleaning house and burning things to the ground, which I know that you would be amazing at. Um, all right. We'll, we will be back with our panel. First, we want to thank our sponsor, Jace Medical. So I just want to remind you guys why it's so important for you to have a Jace case. Um, things are very unstable right now. Uh, the economy is not what you would call great. Inflation is still really high. And, you know, people aren't able to pay their expenses. They're falling further and further behind. Consumer sentiment is at its lowest level in the past half a year. And we've seen what our overrun healthcare system looks like when the economy is booming. So just imagine if something like, I don't know, a pandemic happened right now. Eh, nothing good would come of that. The Jace case is a personalized emergency kit that contains essential antibiotics and medications that treat the most common and deadly bacterial infections. They've got five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use that come in the kit. Plus, you can customize it and add more to your liking. They've got EpiPens. They've got Ivermectin. So you can customize it for what your family needs. By the way, uh, one of my friends, a viewer of this program, went out bought it and sent me a text message not that long ago, Memorial Day weekend, thanking me because he was like, our son had an ear infection. It was a, a holiday weekend. It saved us a trip to you know the ER or urgent care because we had that antibiotic and we were able to administer it to him and he could get better much more quickly. And of course, we didn't have the, uh, the extra stress of going to get him in on a holiday weekend. So it's there for when you need it. It's just like emergency food. When you need it, it's it's there. So don't wait on this. Go to jacemedical.com. Enter code Sarah at checkout for a discount on your order. That is promo code S-A-R-A at J-A-S-E medical.com. All right, we're bringing in the panel here. I want to welcome to the show Matthew Mosden, Blaze TV contributor and actor and producer extraordinaire, along with Christopher Bedford. It's his first time on the show. He is, of course, our very own senior politics editor. Uh, glad that you're here. You're, you're here from the swamp? I'm, I'm from the swamp, yeah. Sorry. After nearly 20 years, I took refuge across the river so I can maybe just like hurl Different plague animals and other siege weapons right. over the walls, but right. Right. it's right. still close. <laughs> so when you come here, does it feel like like you just breathe in just fresh, non-swampy air? Does it feel different? Not in the summer. Yeah, uh, I know. It's, it's I was going to say. extremely similar. I was going to say it is pretty damn hot, but uh, we have, I don't know, I feel like less uh, evil elitists here. So. Definitely. There is that. There are people. Um, so, okay, so yesterday, Joe Biden announced this, you know, executive order that's giving protections to the first, the original count was a, a couple hundred thousand illegal immigrants, but this is actually now they're saying it's closer to 500,000 illegal immigrants who are married to United States citizens and have been in this country for over 10 years. This is, you know, uh, amnesty plan, mass amnesty plan. Uh, now he says, I want to get your thoughts on this gentleman. He says... That this mass amnesty plan actually has overwhelming support from the American people. Watch. The actions I'm announcing today will go into effect later this summer. And by the way, just as was true for the protection of dreamers, the steps I'm taking today are overwhelmingly supported by the American people, no matter what the other team says. Um, that's just not true. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll speak for uh, the Hispanic voters. 
uh, there was a new poll that was released at being the person of color at the table. Uh, I will speak for Hispanics. Hispanic voters uh, favor deporting all illegals. They just there was recently a poll and 53 percent of them said, yes, we support deporting all illegals. No, 47 percent. But uh, it's very highly in favor from everything that I've read. Am I missing something, gentlemen? I think they're just trying to play the greatest hits again. They're trying to get the family separation thing back in the news. Mm. They want Republicans to come out and say, no, take people's wives from them and send them over the border and get all the photographs. And suddenly Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez can go down there and, and weep at the fences. And they, I think they want to try and just make this. Wait a second, guys. This is not about criminal overlords being in charge of a southern border. This is not about the rape and the murder and the drug trafficking. This is not about the crime that's like really apparent in Chicago and Boston uh, and Washington, D.C. It's not about it's, it's really about family separation and our duty and this try to kind of paint it with that. But and it's also it's got to be something they're trying to shore up support with every one of those married uh, people who's married to an illegal immigrant mm. maybe wants to vote for Joe Biden again and they need the support that they're losing it. And also try to shore up support with their left, who's feeling pretty let down by the fact that Biden, the Biden administration has been confronted with reality on the border. Yeah, Matt. If they care about family separation, why haven't they sorted my situation out? Why does my son, as as an as a legal immigrant, as a naturalized citizen, why does my son have to wait four years to get processed to come in? It's funny. And I'd also like to know the numbers on immigrants. As I will speak for all legal immigrants into this country <laughs> and naturalized citizens, because I can tell you, there's no one that is more pissed off right. about illegal immigrants than legal immigrants, let me tell you, the guys that did it the right way and yes. spent, as I did, thousands and thousands of dollars to get in. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, and that's, I think, you know, not all of the Hispanic people who they're polling uh, are are immigrants, but certainly, so, I mean, like, my, my ancestors did it the right way. My grandparents did it the right way, right? So why can't all of you? And I do think that there is a lot of, uh, I think that that's shared by, it doesn't matter what color you are. Right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what your ethnicity is. It doesn't matter where you came from. You can at least acknowledge. Hold on a second. There are people who are all waiting in line doing this the right way, who all have sob stories of their own. OK, and they are still waiting and paying a lot of money. And you guys think that you're entitled to just jump the line. And by the way, in doing so, get a bunch of free stuff. Well, look, That's not how it works. Th this is it's about two things, right? The first thing is, is to get the voters, as you said, because they're struggling. They're really panicking. So why cram this in? They've had four years to do this. They could have done it at the very beginning. Why? Because now they're absolutely terrified. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, this is happening all over Europe, right? They are shoveling in illegal Im immigrants all across. Th this is why there's been this massive push in, in Europe, which they're calling now. It's, and I want to explain this to, to Americans, right? Over here, when they call you right wing, it just means that you're a conservative. Over there, when they call you a right, wi right wing, it means you truly are a member of the Nazi party. That's what they're trying to tell, that's what they're trying to smear you with, right? Mm -hmm. So what's happening, there's a populist movement going on over there. Like there kind of was coming when Trump got in in 2016 with Brexit. But it's happening again. Because... You're seeing people in Germany, people in France going, hang on a second, like, what, why are these knifings, every, why are the stabbings, what is, what is going on with the violence? We're seeing it all across the board. Mm -hmm. I, what I want to know, well, I know the answer to it, because what they want to do is they want to destroy Western civilization. That is, that is their aim, right? But why isn't anyone really calling it out for what it is in the mainstream media? Because that's what it is, right? They're dragging the Western countries down to the level of these third, third world countries, which by the way is what Obama said he would do. Mm. They're in favor of it. They want it. They want that great equalization. They have a completely different worldview uh, from a lot of conservative folks. So, you know, conservatives may look at the world as a battle between barbarism and civilization, for example. That's why you see a lot of conservatives, regardless of whether or not they've got any ethnic ties to the conflict on the side of Israel versus Hamas. It's kind of like a clear case of barbarism versus civilization. Right. And it's the same thing. But, but, the, but a lot of folks who come from that left point of view just look at it as a battle between oppressed and oppressor. So if you're if you're a desperate person, if you're someone who's who's coming across the channel to get new to get new teeth or something or to get a new job, you're the oppressed. 
So anyone who tries to stop you is oppressor. It's they have just a diametrically different worldview, and they want to enforce it. And they, the whole the whole thing with this, the European Union is the worst of it. It's supposed to be an economic thing. It's not about economics. They don't care about economics right now. They're fining Turkey uh, hundreds of millions, or they're trying to fine uh, excuse me Hungary hundreds of millions of euros for not trying to import uh, the third world into Hungary. It's not about economics. That's about uh, a liberal elite vision for what the future of Europe should be, and they'll destroy economies to do it. Yeah. Oh, 100 percent. I'm in. I mean, talking about economies, this is going to have devastating effects on our economy for years to come. Even I, I, my personal opinion, even if we started mass deportations in January, we would still see the ramifications of. Which we never will. No. Oh no. I mean. <laughs> I would love it. I keep advocating for it. I, so you I, see the polling is for it now, and I, I mean, Republicans are getting excited about that. But as soon as you actually start to see the images... I know. It, it's the optics. And it's, it's the just, optics. It stops. People, it's uncomfortable for people. Because exactly. I don't, yeah, I don't the, think people care anymore. I, I, I honestly don't. I think people now are like, whatever. Because the same squeaky wheels are going to say what they want to say anyway. They're going to they're gonna, you know, cry. They're going to they're gonna do it anyway. This is the problem with the left. They've overplayed their hand. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that people now are like, sorry, you shouldn't come over. You shouldn't have done it. You could have done it the legal, the legal way. You didn't. I'm sorry. This is America. Well, well, it would take a competent right, though, like a, a, an American right or a European right or anyone that's actually willing to do what they say and what the voters want. I think the politics would look so different. In D.C., it's incredibly disappointing the difference between what Republicans do and what Republicans got elected to do. Yeah. Oh, I 100 percent agree with you. Um, but so, I mean, you're talking about, you know, this mass influx in such a short amount of time. Um, I think I think it's a conservative estimate to say 10 million in Joe Biden, just just under Joe Biden. I, I keep hearing that number thrown around. I'm like, I don't believe it. I think it's much higher than that. But I mean, you're talking about just in the span of three and a half years, all of those people, this mass influx all at the same time. Um, and, you know, you're you're hearing all of these stories, Lake and Riley and all of these other people, Americans who are ending up either murdered, violently attacked, uh, children who are sexually abused by all of these people who end up being from, you know, Venezuelan gangs and, and what have you. And still the nerve of the White House. We heard the White House press secretary, Karine Jean-Pierre, going on NBC and saying that this action is about protecting American citizens. Watch. You heard it directly from the president today, right? He talked about who we are as a country. He talked about the importance of putting forth legal pathways, but at the same time, securing our border. He talked, if you think about the announcement that he made today, mm -hmm. it's about protecting American citizens, American families. Oh, that's not. What? <laughs> right? Like, uh, I think the mothers and fathers of all of those who have been killed by all of these illegals would like to have a word. You know, there's a, there's a big thing of the Democrat Party that tries to make it so that Emma Lazarus's poem is basically the central governing doctrine of the United States. The poem that's the bottom of the Statue of Liberty, that that is... They've remade the American founding, which is an important one because it's actually a modern founding. It's not something that's shrouded in the sands of time and mist, uh, mist of time. It's something that actually happened with real people. They've turned those people into villains and said that they were oppressors against not civilization, but oppressors, that they were slavers, that they were bad men. And the, and the American founding was actually done by illegal immigrants and slaves. And that is a complete and total twisting of what built the country, what the country really, truly is. But they're dedicated to it. And I think a good number of them have really convinced themselves that that is the truth. Yeah. Well, they just keep saying it. We've said this over and over again on the show is that they'll just keep stating things like that's the truth. And I want to ask you something, actually, Chris, because, you know, being from the swamp <laughs> and all, I was from the swamp on the other coast, uh, which is the Hollywood swamp. Um, they really did. They have this little bubble, right? Like the guys in home. I mean, I just went back there, Sarah, as you know, went back this weekend. And the, the, the state of Los Angeles in the two years that I've been away, interestingly, it coincides with Biden getting in. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's like a wasteland. It really is like a dystopian area. And, but I want to be clear here. You're, I mean, you are not denying the fact that it was really bad before, right? Like you're not saying like it was good and then it turned bad. You're just no, saying it went from bad to worse. I'm, I'm saying that it went from bad to worse 
rapidly. Right. Like it, it was, it was very slow. But there's there's something very different about it now. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lawlessness. Like I went to play, uh, went bowling, and there were three guys at the front of the bowling alley with tactical gear on and guns. And I've never seen that before. <laughs> like anyway, it was unbelievable. But my question is, because in Hollywood, they all talk to each other. They're in these little, this little bubble, you know, they're in Pacific Palisades or up in Beverly Hills in their, in their nice big houses and they go for brunch at, you know, the Beverly Hills Hotel. They don't really get to talk to anybody in the real world, right? Is that the same? Because look at Corinne Jean-Pierre, Jean right? Jean-Pierre. And uh, she, are they just like absolute liars or do they really believe in what they're saying do, in that little Washington league. Cause you said like, I mean, I've been there. I've seen these people. They do. They all talk about politics. It's all they talk about, but they don't, it's like a game to them. Yeah. Right. It's like theory. It's not like real life. Is that what you've experienced? It's a blend. Them? I doubt there's anyone in her social circle who, who agrees with Peter Ducey or someone when they ask questions. I doubt there's anyone who really challenges her worldview. I mean, you see that with Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to bring her up again as someone who may have been, may, was failed by her school because no one ever actually challenged her viewpoints. So she repeats things that are on their face stupid. But it's now, it's, now she's a congresswoman as opposed to as a student. So there's other people out there to say, I can't believe you actually think that. But there's also, I mean, the, the Democratic Party, much more than the Republican Party, understands power. And power is a virtue. They have that will to achieve it. They think that it's worth it. They're willing to sacrifice majorities to get it. They're willing to push and bend reality to, uh, to get their goals across. They think they're on the right side of the history. And like you said, everyone else is the far right. They're Nazis. They're all bad, ultra MAGA. Uh, so they're willing to lie to defend that because there's, so much of their worldview is dependent on the belief that they are fundamentally decent people who are just trying to make the world a better place and that they are against not their friends on the other side of the aisle, but, uh, but Nazis. Evil, mm, evil, evil, evil people. Mm -hmm. That's a great point. Um, and, and particularly when it comes to the illegal immigration debate, they it frustrates me so much that they feel like they get to take the position of compassion. Like they're trying to tell the American people, we're actually the compassionate ones because we care about these people. And it's like... You, if you actually uh, the amount of Americans that believe that garbage really frustrate me because it's like if you actually look into it and you look at all of the people who are putting themselves in harm's way, who are putting their children in harm's way in order to get here, their children are being raped along the way multiple times. If they survive the, you know, the, the dangerous journey getting here, the people who are ending up drowned in the Rio Grande because they were told that they should come here so that they can get free stuff from this federal government. I mean, it's just the most like incompassionate thing that I could think of that you could do to a, a ton of people and yet they want to walk this moral high ground. It just, it's, it's so frustrating weakness. to me. I mean, from the start, I mean, that's been, compassion's been something that's been central to the American identity. Yeah. Of we're the underdogs, we're the outliers, we're not the lords, we're not the kings, we don't have those, we're not the, we're, we're not the big massive landowners that have a, uh, we're on the side of sometimes it, lead, it leads American policy deeply astray like mm -hmm. when they mm -hmm. forced the mass decolonization of the planet after World War II in the name of just we're all underdogs. But that that spirit of compassion is generally a good thing. It, right. Have mercy on the criminal. Uh, you hear it in poetry. You hear it in our stories. You, you listen hear it in country music, all the songs from the perspective of the downtrodden. But it can be taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. uh, that Christian spirit can be taken advantage of for people to push fundamentally on Christian things and say, oh, you feel bad. And the same thing is to take advantage of that kind of libertarian aspect. This is part of the the, nat uh, the national character where you say, hey, what, what, what business is it of mine, what someone else does? Right. You take that to its full extreme, you end up with Los Angeles, you end up with Denver, you end up with Austin and these cities that are have just gone gone completely to hell. Yeah, well, and I think that that's why we've ended up in these, I know we got to take a break here in a second, but that's why we've ended up in these, with these red states or red areas that have slowly, we've seen, oh, wait a second, there's porn in that elementary school because we've sat back and said, live and let live, we're just going to mind our own business and meanwhile, the left has not had that mentality. They've decided to infiltrate all of our institutions and very quietly, very sneakily and then they've taken over. So and books now? That's <laughs> pornography. Right, right. <laughs> Sir, uh what what's Playboy has never been allowed Hustler's never been allowed in school libraries. So if you want to call it ban, sure. I just call it protecting children. Um, all right, let's go ahead. We're going to take a quick break and then we'll be back with more. First, we want to thank our sponsor, the segment Relief Factor. So Relief Factor is there for those of you who 
Maybe you've got neck pain, back pain, knee pain, whatever the case may be, you may not realize um, mostly the, the root cause of your pain is inflammation. So if you can get rid of the inflammation, you actually solve the entire problem rather than just masking it. Matt, Matt knows this because he took it. I do. It I tried it. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, worked. it worked. It, it, worked for it him. absolutely did work. Yeah. yeah. Remind me again what your issue was. I had a back pain because I was doing, uh, I was in, I think I was in New York and I was doing a lot of walking, mm -hmm. like a ton of walking and it hurt my back. So I was like, I pop some of that. Yeah. Great stuff. And so we've had, I mean, it works for me. It's worked for him. It's worked for many people in the building, but there are, it's always fun to gauge people um, how quickly it started working for them. Cause oftentimes it's like within, sometimes it's in within days. Most of the time it's within a week that they find a real true difference, but they do have a three week quick start. Go to their website, order the three, three week quick start. 70% of the people who order it keep going on to order more. That's how many people it's working for. It's only $19.95. It's got a guarantee and you've got nothing to lose except your pain. You can go get that at relieffactor.com. That is relieffactor.com. Well, we were talking about uh, illegal immigration. Obviously, Donald Trump is taking all uh, chances that he can to hammer Joe Biden over this executive order and not just this exec executive order, but the open borders policy that Joe Biden has had throughout his entire presidency. So, you know, he talks about mass deportations. He talks about all of that. But I want to talk about um, something else that he is promising to do. He says on day one which is take immediate action to punish schools that teach critical race theory and push transgender uh, insanity in schools. Here is some of that clip from a rally watch. On day one, I will sign a new executive order to cut federal funding of any school pushing critical race theory, transgender insanity, and other inappropriate racial, sexual, or political content onto the lives of our children. I mean... I would personally love that. Day one. It's a good idea. It's a great idea. But I hope he's learned from the first administration because uh, an executive order is basically uh, a fancy press release with a bunch of glitter on it. It doesn't actually, you don't, it's not, you don't just make a proclamation and it happens. You have to really see these things through. And the president made a couple of these mistakes in his first term where he would say things like, uh, we're banning no more trans in the military. Well, guess what? That's not actually an order. That's a tweet. And <laughs> Secretary Mattis just ignored it. And yeah. now, and then he moved on with his, with his life. And now he's going to come back. And it's probably now been eight years at this point of transgender in the military. You're not really going to be able to get rid of it that easily. It's going to be tied up in lawsuits. And by year four, maybe another Republican comes in after that. So if he wants to do this, I think the way he's going to have to do it is the way that Bill Barr was starting to toy with getting rid of uh, some of the problems going on in workplaces uh, near the end b before uh, Trump ended up losing re-election, which was saying report incidents of bias, racial bias, and starting to punish bias mm -hmm. against white people, bias against men, bias against straight people, start doing things or create – Try to get the DOJ to support parental rights. So those people, I mean, charge the state of California with kidnapping. Right. You, you can't right. take children from their parents. Right. Those are the sorts of legal remedies, but it takes hardball. It's not going to be an executive order. It's not simply going to be a tweet. It's got to be directing your attorney general to pursue these cases, your Department of Education to pursue this. And ideally, I mean, it'd, it'd, be, it'd be great to see it in the states where they say, why, why, why is the state of Texas funding public schools at all that allow for this stuff to happen? And they is, uh, but the, from the federal level, because of all the lawsuits and everything, it's going to take some hard people making some hard decisions, and I hope they all buy the insurance because you're, they're going to get sued in the personal in a personal capacity, and the mm -hmm. ACLU and everyone else is going to try and ruin their lives. So I'm all for it. I want to see an end to it, but it's it's just hardball. What if what if he does both at the same time? Like, what if he signs right. the executive order, but then also follows through with all of those other That would measures? be excellent. Okay. I just need, you need to see the follow through, right. and they're going to come at you. And often these things, they'll be tied up for years. Because yeah. unfortunately, in the United States now, we're basically governed by judges. Right. A lot of them activist judges. Exactly. Which is terrifying. I, and to Chris's point, Matt... It is frustrating because, I mean, I hit the current president, or I like to just call him the the man who lives at the White House, but I hit, I hit him all the time on executive orders, which is, you know, I think he's completely abused his power with these executive orders because he's just bypassing Congress. But 
at a certain point, you have to say, okay, this is a game of chicken because Congress is not going to do anything. Congress doesn't want to make any hard decisions, it seems like, anymore. They're just perfectly fine sitting on the sidelines and letting someone just dictate and make the hard decisions so that they don't have to. So it's like, well, at what point do you have to go like, okay, you guys are not doing it. I've got to do it. And, uh, you know, like, I, I... I agree with you that executive orders is particularly with this regime has been horrendous and a total abuse of power and also can be completely undone by the next president, which makes it so dangerous to rule by that. But it also is like, well, Congress isn't going to do their damn job. I don't trust any of them. No, I mean, uh, we all know that the Congress doesn't do anything at all. I mean, they're so weak. Well, as Chris the said, Republicans they Republicans are pathetic. As Chris said, they campaign like they're going to they're going to do a bunch of stuff and then they get in and then they just do nothing. Yeah, no, it's ridiculous. Raise money. <laughs> they're they're pretty good at raising money. You're right. They're pretty good for making money for themselves. Well, hold on, hold on. We're forgetting that they do clip out videos of themselves during hearings, and they post it online and get oh. lots of likes and views. Oh. And donations, and then they, they pop onto different shows, and they talk about, we're going to investigate yeah. this. Yeah. Who cares? The Democrats are putting people in prison. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. And by the way, they're not even, they're like, well, we're going to have a discussion about whether or not we are going to investigate it. And boy, if we do. You're going to be really scared. Meanwhile, Donald Trump's probably like going to be on house arrest. Well, well, but this is the point, I think, that we, we have to remember. For him, this is very, very different. Mm-hmm. He has been harassed, harangued. He's had all this attack, you know, these relentless attacks on him. The Trump that gets in this time is going to be very, very different to the Trump that got in last time. And we need that because, look... You would have to believe. Uh, no, I mean, he's, he's got, it's, he's going to lose everything. Like they are not going to stop. They're going to go after his family. You know, even if he, if he gets in, they're going to go after his family. So he knows that he has to dismantle it all. And good. It's almost like that has been served up. Like the, the Democrats have done the worst thing possible is they've pissed off somebody who is absolute, who's an absolute killer businessman. And he's not going to make the same mistake twice. I really, really believe that. So here's the option we have. He doesn't get in and the Democrats get in and the country's over. I genuinely believe that. I think they're going to just destroy it beyond recognition. It's almost there now, right? Or Trump gets in and the riots start on his first day. Or, or even the day after on November the 5th, they're going to start like well, November the 5th, November the 6th, they're going to start rioting. It's going to happen. So Buckle up. I believe it's going to be bad either. It's going to be, I did it. I did a bit uh, of oh, you did it. It's going to be bad. It's going to be beautiful. It's probably going to be the most beautiful. I don't know. It's, it's the probably, biggest riot. It's the biggest riot. It's going to be big. It's probably a beautiful big riot. Huge crowds. Huge crowds. Huge. You've never Look seen crowds. Never seen the beautiful crowds. It's beautiful. Um, but I think that he's going to take a wrecking ball to it and it's going to be chaotic. It's going to be chaotic. If they get in, I'd rather it be chaotic when our guy gets in Mm -hmm. and he actually dismantles it. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that the Congress is going to be motivated into acting because I think he is going to start doing stuff. And I do think he's going to go after the FBI. And I do think he's going to go after all the... the He won't fall for that again. Oh, no. There's no chance. And and by the way... By the way, when, yeah, and when they were like, oh, yeah, you know, when he's talking about giving him a beautiful building, I, I keep telling people, do you not know that this guy he wrote the art of the deal? Like, this is what he does all the time. You know, was he it? also has verbal man, diarrhea. Little rocket man. Yeah, but. I mean, I love him. He but does, he does, but he just also. Talks. He does, but also. It's negotiating. <clears throat> he right. goes here and gets what he wants here. It's, it's great negotiation. I'm surprised by people who get shocked by him. Like, again, I don't, I don't get shocked when he has verbal diarrhea. Right. I don't get shocked right. when he makes a great deal. Right. right? Well, I mean, I'm just looking at policy, right? Like, I don't care what he tweets about. I don't care what he says in passing as like a one-off. I just care about what what is the policy here. Um, all right. We've got to uh, take another quick break. We'll be back with more. But I want to remind you guys, if you have not yet seen my Blaze Originals, Go check it out right now. It's called Voter Fraud Exposed, How Elections Can Be Stolen. We're, we're talking about the importance of this upcoming election in November. Well, you need to hear about all of the ways that the left is trying to um, basically rig the game. And in some ways, it's totally legal. Make sure you check it out. You can go to blazeoriginals.com slash Sarah. You can get $30 off with the code voter fraud over there. It is blazeoriginals.com slash Sarah. We're talking about just 
how bad it is with Joe Biden in charge. Um, they've just made such a mockery of the White House. It, it's just uh, it's more and more disturbing every day. And so yesterday, I guess, Jonathan Van Ness, who is from Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, apparently made some visit to uh, the White House with Vice President Kamala Harris. Um, and I just, you know what, uh, let's just let's just play some of this. Watch. Welcome today, everyone, to the White House. I'd like to briefly answer some questions. Go ahead, I'm ready. JVN. Oh, yes. Is it true that it's all your natural hair? Yes, I can confirm that this is not a wig. Follow-up so question. Do you no use extensions. your own products? I do use JVN hair actually exclusively for over four years. Next question. <laughs> is it true Karamo is your favorite member of the Fat Five? Oh, I will say that I can confirm that Karamo Brown is my favorite member of the Fat Five. Oh. I also have a very strict rule that if I'm only with one of our castmates, they are in fact my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but wait, but wait, there's more. There's actually more. I want to show you, um, of course, them directly with Kamala Harris. Watch. Maybe. Queer Eye visits the White House, it says, for those of you listening on audio Just podcast. So you know, we're going to fight every urge not to open drawers, but it's in our DNA. <laughs> See, there's John Lewis. Yeah. So there we are on the Edmund Pettus Bridge deck. Oh, wow. wow. Uh, Honey, I know, that of my president. Uh, uh, yeah. So, by the way, this is, of course, uh, after the infamous trans person with just her breasts out on the White House lawn. You recall that? Mm -hmm. Something you wish you couldn't recall? Yeah. There's a lot of weird <laughs> stuff going on in this White House. Uh, usually in my Blaze newsletter, I, I include something that's either really smart. Uh, someone, s someone else wrote some smart article that's either about the decline or, or some noble effort to rebuild in the country uh, and in the West, in the West more broadly. And this morning, I just included those clips just they speak for themselves. It's the ghastly. Uh, it, it's, it seems like when you see um, period dramas of American ambassadors or English ambassadors visiting the French court just before the revolution, how creepy and ghastly, mm -hmm. <laughs> just strange the whole thing, the ancient regime was. And they're like that or something out of Hunger Games. And, yeah, it's, it's kind of funny to see in that clip these the other guys, the other co-hosts from Queer Eye who seem like time travelers from 2004. They're like just well-dressed, mild-mannered men who want to dress, who want to make you better. But there's this very strange guy, Jonathan, who's at the front, who acts like a woman, who flicks back and forth. This strange, this a strange just interpretation of a woman who completely dominates the screen time. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's all his friends who want to go into your schools and 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 strip in front of your children. Mm -hmm. And you know, it just makes me long for the good old days of guy. Hey, Maybe Queer Eye for the Straight Guy, just a, a show on Bravo that's now 20 years old, so I guess was the reason for this. Um, and that was a good representation of where it's all gone a little little weirder. Yeah, I totally agree, Matt. It's not going to stop there. That, oh. that's, that, oh, this no. is the thing. It's not going to stop. No. And a lot of gay guys now are like, what is going on? Like even gay guys are there like looking around saying, what is this? Yeah. I'm not a part of this. No. And so you, you have to look and – and ask the question, who is this targeting, really? Like, Children. is it? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm just saying, and, and someone else came out with something about, uh, something about kids. It always ends up being about children in the end. It, it, really, it really does. It's normalizing. It's getting people, whether it's, whether it's TV shows now, whether it's schools, it's all about targeting the kids. And this is really bad. And again, like I said, I mean, I've seen multiple gay guys say on social media, this is weird to me. So fast forward and, you know, you said that was like, like someone in what, 2004, that a gay guy that just wants to dress nice and, you know, maybe like redecorate your house. <laughs> now it's, so where is this going to be in another 10 years time, another five years time? Like, where are we going with this? I mean, obviously, it's for the kids, right? I mean, well, I mean, case in point, I know Kamala Harris tweeted out she's 
like hugging a drag queen on stage and she said, our LGBTQI plus children should not fear who they are. No one should be made to fight alone. We are all in this together and we will fight with pride. I don't know what they're talking about. I mean, if you walk through Old Town Alexandria where I live, it looks like there's as many banners as you see in a World War II occupied Berlin. I mean, it's rainbow crosswalks, rainbow flags. Every single flagpole around the city hall is a rainbow. There's a new symbol in the Lululemon window. There's a new flag, which I'm always trying to keep up with, in the uh, Starbucks. Uh, they had uh, rainbow bunting. I mean, it seems like it's completely triumphant, whereas... Uh, and, and, you know, the local brewery, brewery will have this thing, like, this is a place that welcomes this, welcomes that, welcomes uh, women in burqas, welcomes breastfeeding women in burqas, which I, I don't actually think that many breastfeeding observant Muslim women <laughs> hang out at breweries. But if they do, they're welcome. And really what that means, though, is that I'm not welcome. It's like mm -hmm. Catholics, get lost. Mm -hmm. uh, Republicans, get lost. Uh, evangelicals, take a hike. Anyone who says, you know... I, I, love is this or love is that, but that's perversion and get away from my kids. You're not welcome. Right. But they're always saying that they're trying to p defend the downtrodden. They're in charge. Yeah. I mean, I grew up a punk rocker with you know, spiked hair and leather jacket and all that. And I see the punks these days and they've all got Joe Biden pins. They're wearing masks outdoors. They've got their rainbow stuff. I'm like, you're representing the regime. Yeah. What are you rebelling against? I don't yeah. even get it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You're totally right. I um one more one more here for you guys really quickly. Uh, the Buffalo Bills yesterday announced that the franchise will sponsor a new national gay flag football league uh, chapter in the city, which I think gives a whole new meaning to uh, the term tight end. But uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not making any comment about wide receivers. <laughs> what makes it get, like what it's football? What makes it gay? I don't know. Well, well, listen, the, the center is in. The time. center's in. The center's in for a real surprise. All right, <laughs> he's not even going to see it coming. I played Do center for a while. <laughs> <laughs> I played. So you get close. You know, there's always the the slap on the butt after a good play, uh, which is probably why maybe there's more comfort as opposed to most other sports being completely integrated. Maybe keep football <laughs> like, all right, you guys do the right. gay league over here. You're already kind of gay. Same thing with so. rugby. There was a gay men's rugby team in D.C. It was a separate because, I mean, rugby gets, you get pretty close to each other. Right. We just keep that separate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, well, I mean, you're already pretty gay, so it'll be fine. Um, all right, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. All right, the Airline Pilots Association, uh, representing over 70,000 pilots globally, is now ur urging the avoidance of terms like cockpit because be kidding. it's not inclusive to women. Also, manpower and uh, other masculine generalizations. You know, we got to exclude those from for equity. I'm just going to say cockpit more now. Cockpit. Mm -hmm. Joystick. <laughs> I mean, cockpits are from rooster fights, right? I think that's where the term is, is from. Is it? Yeah where, the, yeah, where they had the roosters. I mean, it's obviously, it's obviously not from male genitalia. Yeah. So. We, and by the way, America just even cocked on cockfighting. You can't even do it in Puerto Rico anymore. When the American territories were the last place you could have good old-fashioned strap razors to roosters and have them fight for money. And even that great Puerto Rican tradition is now illegal <laughs> under the Biden administration. But yeah, I, I took a Boeing here this morning, and they asked me to move seats for, so a family could sit there. And they put me next to the exit. And I was worried in that 737. So at least as long as they're changing the gender names, I'll feel better as I get sucked out right, the door right, and right. fly into oblivion. I'll think yeah. at least this was inclusive. At least we didn't say cockpit. <laughs>